function of his affair. So, you never buy anything you can't use? We never. Hmm. Here we are, the wine cellar. This is where you keep the vampire battlefly? Ah, oui, the precious battlefly. It is the only reason that you came to my party. Isn't it? Oh, oh, no. oh well. excusez-moi. There's nothing not right about him figuring that out now. I'm not talking about his hobbies. I'm talking about his suspiciously acrobatic maid. And? And the fact that he just admitted he never buys anything he can't use. And? 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 One half of a destructive vampire battlefly couple. Is useless. And? 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 The acrobatic maid Antoinette stole the female battlefly. And? That means... They're both in the castle! Number GoDaddyO Sherpa.6, Part 2. The agents are about to be crushed into this year's Beaujolais Nouveau. Agent number one voice activates his corkscrew slash his and hers Venetian hummingbird feeder with satellite uplink. Screw it. Hey! Yeah. Yeah. Hey, do you taste that? What, too fruity? No, too garlicky. Mm -hmm. hey. Garlic infused champagne? Bleu. Hello. See you are, you sneaky agents. Well, if it isn't the Marquis de Guise acrobatic bug-snatching maid. The Marquis sent me to tell you that he apologizes. His birthday party is starting. He will have to show you the battlefly later. Oh, really? Can I help you change into some dry clothes? Hmm. Oh, God, oh, God. As the agents enter the Marquis' birthday bash... Agent number one notices someone unusual in the usual unusual crowd. Oh my god, that's the scientist who created the vampire battleflies. No, it's not. It's me, my love her. Yeah, the scientist who designed... Wait a minute, you know her? No. Liar. Okay. She taught creative biological warfare 101 at spy camp that summer you had mana. Introduce me. I was a bad student. Introduce me. Hey, Jean Du. Mimi. She looks awfully young to be a professor. She's the Doogie Hauser of global biological warfare. Hmm. Oh, look who is here. My favorite little American pupil. Long time no see, Professor Leverve. How cute. You still have trouble calling me Mimi. Mimi, he's told me so much about you. Did he tell you how I whipped him into shape? Ouch, you were a bad little student. I got an A. I bet you did. Shut up. Are you here about the vampires? Well, uh, we're not here for the party. Ha, 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 ha. And you? I am here on a personal mission. I must stop my creations from copulating. I understand there's no telling what the carnivorous offspring are capable of. They're not carnivores, they're herbivores. Mm. Their fangs are used to suck moisture from all living plants. Brilliant. Mm -hmm. A genetic hybrid of a common fruit bat and a monarch butterfly, no? Oh, you are a good student. You cheat. Look, enough with the progress report. If both battleflies are in this castle, we have to move fast. I forgot how easy it was to get you worked up, Agent Du. Perhaps we should uh, join forces and search ah. the place. No, perhaps we should divide and conquer. Rendezvous in the vineyard. Eight o'clock. The northwest corner. Au revoir. Bye. Never so foolish as to overlook the obvious, Agent Number One searches the bookcase for a trigger to a secret passage. Northwest passage. Rites of passage. Passage to Indiana. This book opens a secret passage. Hmm. Yes. Meanwhile, Agent Number Two eavesdrops at the Decadent Buffet, hoping to find some juicy tidbits of information. Excuse me, aren't you Mama Poochissimo? See, si. I recognize your face from the label. I don't care much for your wine, but hooray for your marketing campaign. Bob and I own a little vineyard in Napa, that's California. I want to put my face on our label, but Bob says I'm too young. God, you must be so old. <laughs> Bob, man, beer. Think it out loud, cook me. You in the vine business? Sure, mate. Me and the dingo. You? Yeah, I'm in the vine. Are you in the vine? I was earlier, but now I'm in the spy business. Oh. Thanks for the info. Dingo no luck, spies. Hmm. Find anything suspicious, my little teacher's pet. Let's get one thing straight, Mimi. Mm. I was never your pet. How precious. Still afraid of the leash. Afraid's not the word. Northwest corner of the vineyard at eight. In the meantime... Perhaps you will find the word. Gravy. Italy. Germany. California. Australia. Hmm. Stop! 
Hear me. I almost fell for this intrigue myself. This book opens a secret passage. There is no secret passage. Mm, the Marquis has a strange sense of humor, no? <laughs> <laughs> By the way, I also found nothing in the conservatory, the billiard room, the lounge, the kitchen, the hall, and absolutely nothing in the ballroom. Oh, you really get around. Is that what Agent 2 told you? He hasn't told me a thing. That's hard to believe. What happened between the two of you? Nothing that couldn't happen between the three of us. Really? Northwest corner of the vineyard at eight. <laughs> agent number two contacts agent number one on his high-end CD quality music downloading infrared wrist communication system, complete with slim, genuine black leather strap. Location? I'm traveling south by southeast. You? North by northeast. What'd you find? A map covered with butterfly stick pens marking the wine regions of the world. Well, I guess that explains the International Wine Growers Convention at the buffet table. The Marquis has made the International Sparkling Wine Market his target. And his weapon of choice is... Vampire, Vampire butterflies. butterflies. And there's something I have to tell you about Mimi. She's, she's a, a liar. Li among other things. I cut her in a lie. She's probably working with the Marquis. I think she's working for the Butterflies. What? As their creator, she has a natural maternal instinct to protect when she's brought into this world. Mimi, maternal? Look. There's something I have to tell you about Mamie. She's a... Wait. Hear that? What is that? Hitchcock. What? North by Northwest. Duck! Not out, Cass. With just a hint of lemon. <laughs> Spy Groove, file number GoDaddyO Sherpa.6, Part 3. The agents awaken in what appears to be a kinky dream, but is actually the 